Our next speaker is something that is uh, going to talk about something that's near and dear to our heart. Again, it's like brushing our teeth every day. It's our compression, compression, compression. I am delighted to introduce to you Susie Amen, who is a CLT, a director of Comprehend, uh, Comprehension Education and the co-author of Stride, which is a professional guide to compression garment selection for the lower extremity. Dr. Amen is a certified lymphedema therapist through the Lymphology Association of North America. She's a certified wound specialist through the American Board of Wound Management and a proud member of the Lymphology Association of North America and the Association of the Advancement of Wound Care. So once again, feel free to add your questions in the chat and I would like to introduce Susie. Hello, and welcome to the session entitled Conquer Compression. What you don't know can hurt you. I'm Susie Eman, and I'll be your moderator for this session. My conflict of interest disclosures are listed here. I think we all know that appropriately applied compression works. It helps to maintain any edema reductions. It helps to continue to improve tissue texture, what your skin feels like. It helps to reduce pain and improve your mobility by keeping the edema under control. However, compression that is ill-fit or inappropriate textile choice can lead to failure of compression goals. How do you conquer compression? Know the facts. We're going to do that today. We're going to dispel some compression myths. I've chosen the top three compression myths, the ones that I hear the most every day in clinic. They are, number one, all compression garments are the same. Number two, Tighter is better. And number three, compression garments last forever. Let's break these down. Let's bust these myths. Myth number one, all compression is the same. This is a big myth. There are different garment options and styles, and we're gonna go into some of those. And then there are different textiles, what the garment is actually made of. Let's take a look. So, did you guys know there are six different categories of garments? Pictured here for you, there's circular knit, stiffer circular knit, flat knit, wraps, nighttime garments, and decongestive garments. Six different categories. So how can they all be the same? Let's take a look at just a couple of these. So let's start with circular knit, because this is what most people think about when they think about compression garments you know, the pantyhose material. These are garments that are knitted in a circular configuration. As you see pictured here is a knitting machine. The garment is tube shaped and it's finished with sewing. The positives to a circular knit garment, certainly it can be cosmetically more appealing, it's lighter weight. It's good for mild swelling and an individual that has a normal shaped limb with good tissue texture, meaning that you don't have a lot of firm fibrotic uh, firm tissue. Another benefit is the cost. They are relatively inexpensive, but I would tell you, make sure that you stick with your major manufacturers because those are the ones that you know have, that have to adhere to quality standards. Now the negatives of circular knit can be that the fabric can tend to roll or bind or what my patients like to say, it cords. Proper sizing is key and you may need to switch to a flat knit garment. The other thing that can be a negative about circular knit is that it can be difficult to apply. But you, did you know there are donning aids that can help you? A flat knit garment is knitted in a linear configuration. The garment lays flat and is joined together with a knitted seam on what they call a flat bed machine, which is pictured here for you. The benefits of a flat knit garment is it offers better containment. And I'm gonna describe that word for you here in just a minute. But what I want you to notice is, notice that there's no rolling at the top of the knee or down by the ankle. There's no digging in. It does a significantly better job uh, bridging across skin folds or soft tissues. So if you're an individual that has extra folds and you're finding that your garments are falling into the folds, an option, a better option for you might be a flat knit garment. Also, a flat knit garment can be custom made to any shape or size. 
The other thing that I love about flat knit is that it does a significantly better job managing those skin changes that you might be seeing if you have chronic edema. So if you have those lumps and bumps and thick scaly skin and you're not seeing a significant improvement like you see pictured here, it really isn't about the topical creams that you're using, it's about your compression regimen. A good compression of garment with good containment will actually help you to completely resolve all of those tissue texture changes. Now there are negatives to a flat knit. The fabric is thick and can be hot, particularly if you live in a warm area. Also, it can be expensive. And like any compression garment, there can be issues with donning or putting your garment on. But again, there are devices to help you. So if you're struggling with putting your compression on, ask your professional. All right, so I've just told you about compression garments, really what we think of. That was circular knit and flat knit. But there are different garment styles in every category. So you see pictured here all of the different Velcro adjustable wraps. Notice that they're all just a little bit different, whether it's the way that you apply them or the fabric that they're made out of. And then you have your nighttime garments, and this is just a sampling of what's available out there. So again, all of these garments are different. They're made of different fabrics, different textiles. Some are applied differently, and then they cover different areas. So again, no two garments are the same. The other thing about compression garments not being the same is again, the idea that different coverage areas. You can get a compression garment that covers your knee to the thigh, it can be a pantyhose, a capri. It can cover just your toes or your arm, your glove, etc. It can be open toe or a closed toe. The list goes on and on. Not to mention also that different manufacturers have different size charts. So some people go small, medium, large. Other manufacturers will do size one, size two, size three, and still others might do size one, one max, two, two max. So again, you've got to know the particular garment. One size doesn't fit all. You have to be mindful to pick garments to meet your needs, where you have swelling, but also be mindful to pay attention to coverage above where you think you have swelling or below, because it might be necessary to cover those areas as well. And the last word of warning I'll send you is that what it looks like on the box with these very pretty legs um, daintily posed may not be what it looks like in real life. So again, a garment, a lot of times these over-the-counter garments are made in standard sizing. And you can see pictured here would be a gentleman who had a very long foot and this open toe garment, which again, shown on the box, stops here at your toes, certainly is not doing a good job and actually can cause some damage to the foot. So all compression is not the same. The last thing I'll mention is that sometimes garment options that seem helpful aren't always helpful. My favorite thing to bring up to patients who come in and say, oh, I'll get a zipper on my garment. It'll make it so much easier to get it on. But what you have to realize is that when you put a garment on with a zipper, yes, you can get your foot into the garment better, but then you need two hands to close that zipper. You have to approximate the edges and then you have to pull the zipper up and be careful not to pitch your tissue. So again, zippers aren't always what they're cut out to be. I'll make one last comment about this first myth, and that is when you go to order your compression items, make sure that you choose reputable compression businesses, a place that there's actually somebody there to help you size and choose the garment. Avoid the box stores, and you know what I mean, and the sports stores, and don't be lured into the Amazon app. Although there are a lot of options that are out there, there's no quality that's guaranteed within the items that you're going to find. You want to stick with your major manufacturers as well. Again, your Jopes, your Juzo, your Medi, your Sigveris, or your Lohman and Rauschard. Mentioned in no particular order. You want to steer clear of the as seen on TV. Those products that you can get at these big box stores, there's no quality control. There's no guarantee what dosage of compression or the millimeters of mercury of compression that you will get in the product. So again, don't waste your money. 
buy a quality compression garment. Myth number two, tighter is better. Wrong. This is something that I hear every single day. Patients come in and they tell me about that they've tried compression and it didn't work, it didn't hold their swelling, and so they went back and they got a tighter garment. And guess what? It didn't work either. There's actually studies that show if it's too tight, it can impair the edema management. So tighter is not better. Not to mention if it's tighter, it makes it much harder to put that garment on. So let's talk about this idea of therapeutic effectiveness. You guys know that you go buy a compression garment, you're looking for typically a compression class or a dosage. So you might be familiar with millimeters of mercury, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, or class one, class two, class three. That represents the elastic recoil of the garment on your tissues. But let's think about that for just a second. If you have something that's elastic and it's trying to come back to its resting shape, you can envision how that can be uncomfortable. Let me show you a fun example. So again, this is done with a rub bunch of rubber bands that put around the center of a piece of fruit. And notice that over time, those multiple layers of rubber bands are trying to come back to their resting state. And all of a sudden you just have this explosion because you've got fluid being pushed up and you've got fluid being pushed down. Not exactly therapeutic. And you say, well, Susie, what does that have to do with compression garments? But this can actually happen with an individual who, again, for better containment or better edema management, he went up in his compression class and as a result actually had trauma to his skin. So tighter is not better. What we really wanna be thinking about is not just dosage, but also stiffness or containment. Let me give you an example I've got pictured here. Two different garments. The garment on the individual's limb on the right is a Ted hose. So it's a circular knit garment, but notice how it glides and gathers at the ankle. Whereas on her left leg, she has a flat knit garment that actually holds her tissue, holds the structure. It's giving her leg better containment. And how does it do that? Because it's a stiffer garment. So you may say, what determines containment or stiffness? And it goes back to that diagram that I showed you guys earlier. And it's about garment categories. Remember that every garment is just a little bit different because of the way that it's knitted or the actual individual yarns that they're knitting together. That is gonna give you the containment or stiffness, which actually is what we really should be looking for when we talk about therapeutic dosage or therapeutic effectiveness. So let's just look at that just a little bit more. So when I talk about garment categories and I've simplified that diagram here and I've just picked three because those are the three that most people are aware of. Again, two types of compression garments. You've got circular knit and flat knit and then the category of wraps. But realize that within these garment categories, because the garments are made out of different materials and those materials are knitted together or perhaps fabricated differently, you're gonna have different stiffness. Not to mention within each garment category, there is a, if you will, subcategory, meaning that even within the whole idea of a, a pantyhose or a circular knit garment, there's a light version, there's a regular version, there's a firm version. So we really need to be speaking to our manufacturers or your compression specialist at the location where you're purchasing your garments, particularly if this is the first time that you're utilizing compression or if you've tried compression in the past and you haven't had success. Again, speak to your manufacturers. You wanna to talk to your compression specialist, to your therapist, let them help you pick a particular garment category and then subcategory that matches your needs. There are no two compression garments that are the same. All right, that takes us to the th final compression myth, and that's compression garments last forever. I can't tell you the number of patients that have come into me with garments that are two and three years old, and they have holes in them, and they don't understand why they're not working anymore. Realize that textile fatigue 
meaning the elastic fibers that make up the garment will fatigue over time. Most manufacturers will guarantee a garment for six months. You need to make sure that you're washing your garment ideally daily in order to restore the textile properties. And the biggest thing is to remember for most garments, do not dry your compression garments because that's going to help. That will break down those compression fibers much quicker. Compression should be used for volume maintenance, not reduction. And I wanted to squeeze that one in here when we talk about compression lasting forever, that if you change in size, whether that be weight gain, weight loss, or perhaps your edema gets better, you're going to need to change that compression garment. You need to make sure that you fit or measure your garments when your volume is reduced to an optimal level. If you lose or gain, again, significant weight, you'll need to change your garment. Now, an exception to that rule would be reduction type garments and nighttime garments. So again, speak to your compression manufacturer or to your compression expert. Remember, conquering compression is a team effort. Compression is not one size fit all. There are different textiles, different garment styles, and it's important that we're helping you to match that textile to your presentation. Compression should be used to maintain an edema reduction. The exception to this comment is those nighttime garments, which are used to help to soften those tissue texture changes overnight, or your decongestive garments, which are, as the name would imply, used to reduce the volume of leg and then maintain it once a stable volume is achieved. Finally, we need to make sure that we have continuity with our compression. What do I mean by that? There should be no yo-yo compression use, meaning that sometimes you wear it and then sometimes you don't. Optimal compression use requires consistency. Wearing your garment daily. You want to make sure that your compression choice matches your lifestyle. It's okay to have options. I have patients that will have something that they wear on a daily basis, and then they have a, maybe a thinner or lighter garment for those special occasions. We also wanna make sure that we minimize the effect of comorbidities. It's really important that we all work to maintain a healthy lifestyle, that we maintain a healthy weight, and that we stay active, because each of these will have a significant impact on our ability to maintain our edema levels. I hope this session has been helpful and perhaps you have a few questions for me. I do look forward to answering your questions during the question and answer session. But also remember to reach out to your professional in your area because answering questions about compression should be individualized to you. I, I, I wish we were here in person because I'd invite you for dinner <laughs> and um, take a look at my garments at home. Um, let's see here. So we've got several questions. Um, explain what breathopene is and what it is used for. So uh, breathopene is just a catch name oh, that they, a lot of people will use to describe the textile that is used to make certain forms of the Velcro adjustable or the hook and loop garment. So it's a more of a marketing term, um, again, with the idea that the, again, those nighttime garments that they are allowed to breathe, uh, even though they feel somewhat thick. Okay, great. How often should you be measured by your um, lymphedema therapist for your to ensure your correct size and compression? I think it's. I think that's an individual question. I would say a good roadmap is. I have my patients. If it's the first time that they're having compression, I have them come back in six months because again, we want to track the immediate progress with that garment. We don't want to wait a whole year to have that patient, you know, be failing with the particular product that they're using. So I'll see my patients for CBT. We fit them with garments. We have them come back in a minimum of six months. And then after that, once we see that the volume is stable, we'll tell them to come back annually. But we always teach our patients that if you lose or gain weight, or if you have some other perhaps medical issue that's causing your volume to rise or flow, you're going to need to come back to see your compression specialist prior to that time. Okay. Um, we have a patient from India, and um, there aren't very many um, reliable manufacturing companies over there for garments. He, they're wondering if there's any, um, 
any companies that you could recommend that is um, is good for good for international patients? Um, I, if it's possible, it might be easier to speak with that individual directly. I'll be happy to somewhere, shape, or form get, get my email to them, and I can connect them because most of your major manufacturers have international. Um, offices that will be able to tell you which garments are available in your particular area. Unfortunately, we can't ship things, you know, between countries necessarily if they're going to be for sale. So uh, definitely I can ask you guys to hand her, him or her my information and I'll be glad to help direct them. Great. Thank you. Um, if a garment lasts six months, it, does that mean it's daily use or every other day, if we're alternating pairs, you know, I personally have three pairs I alternate. So does rotating help increase the longevity of your, of your garments? Yeah, that's a perfect question. Thank you for asking. And most definitely, it's like having shoes. If you just have one pair of shoes, that garment is going to wear out much, much quicker. So if the world was perfect, I would tell, I tell my patients, you really need two every six months, one to wear and one to wash so that you always have a clean garment. Now, I know here in the U.S. anyway, that's not always possible. Um, but again, if we want to speak, you know, best practice is to have two and that those are changed out every six months. But the manufacturers do guarantee them for six months. Okay. Um, this, uh, this woman, uh, Joanna, again, said um, compression is used for volume maintenance, not reduction, you said. My experience has been compression incre increases my swelling, especially in my home, and, and I do better, oh, in my hand, excuse me, and I do better by not wearing compression at all and doing daily exercise of my arms instead. Can you comment on that? I think it's a perfect question, and it, it kind of goes back to where we really need to reach out to that compression specialist. Most definitely, if you have an ill-fitting garment, you can get swelling on either side of your extremity. So, for instance, I think this individual must be an upper extremity patient, and perhaps she has a, a garment that is inappropriately sized or the wrong textile. Realize, too, I, I noticed, I don't know all the moderators, I, I noticed the young lady that's presenting there in the, the burgundy shirt, she has just a sleeve on but no hand garment. There are some people that just need support on the arm. And that goes back to, we're still learning so much about lymphedema. The take home message though, is if your garment is not working for you, you reach out to a, a compression specialist um, and, and really keep asking because it's about finding out what works best for you. And sometimes that's changing the type of garment that you're using, or you might just be that lucky person that only needs maybe some touch up garment at night. You know, and that's difficult to, to come across in a general presentation like this. Again, it's an individualized approach. Okay, I think we have time for just one more question. Um, okay. uh, this was, I've lost my place, about using, uh, is there um, occurrence of pressure sores if you're using garments after liposuction, and how, how do you deal with that? Um, and I think that kind of goes back to, again, it needs to be well-fitted prior to, and you need to pick the right kind of garment. So if you'll notice in the videos, I believe the, the surgeon that just spoke prior to, he was using flat knit garments, as well as what we what I like to call a cut and sew, or um, it's, it's like a burn garment. So those are custom made garments that have a stiffer compliance. It, I would envision that if you're having some issues with injuries, uh, pressure ulcers, after uh, liposuction, it's most likely more with a circular knit type garment. Um, and again, you're just not going to get good containment. And that, that's a whole other lecture on, you know, the, the physics of compression. Well, thank you so much, Susie. And I know um, you are here with us as well for a breakout session, um, which is uh, going to be terrific because there's several more questions here. Thank you so much. And um, I take it back to Teresa.